Good morning, everyone, and welcome to my second session on the discussion for the exam for the CA Foundation. And we are going to discuss the paper called Business Mathematics. So uh, till now, uh, what I have done till now, I have discussed the first 15 questions of the subject called Business Mathematics for the CA Foundation exam. And I believe you have gone through my previous video uh, where I have discussed the first, first 15 questions. And in case of any doubt, feel free to ask your doubts in the comment section. So we are most welcome to help you uh, with your preparation. So we have done 15 questions for now. Now going forward and start discussing the question from uh, 16. Uh, this question was 16. 15 was also the question of inequality. 16 is also the question of inequality. So when you see uh, the problem of inequality, so here uh, you can see the two equations are given two linear inequations are given to you. And so the first is 2x plus y is less than or equal to 10. So the first equation is the, the first equation is 2x plus y is less than or equal to 10. And the second equation is x minus y is less than or equal to 5. So we need to see uh, like uh, in origin, uh, will origin will be included here. So origin uh, will will origin is the part of the solution. So for that, what you do in place of x and y put a zero zero. So origin means a zero comma zero. So if you put two zero comma zero here, so two into zero plus zero is it less than or equal to ten. So you will get zero. If zero is less than or equal to ten, yes. So yes. So first equation satisfying that. Second equation if you see zero minus zero less than or equal to five. So is 0 less than or equal to 5? Yes. So it means origin would be the part of the solution. Okay. Then uh, going forward, if I talk about going forward, if I discuss further, okay, if I discuss further, so, so you can see this. Uh, so then the next part is like uh, includes the point 4, 3. So 4, 3 means x coordinate is 4 and y coordinate is 3. So 2 into 4 plus 3, is this less than or equal to 10? So this is 8, this is 11. Is 11 less than or equal to 10? No. It is not satisfying the solution. So, so this will not be the part of the solution. While if I try here, it should satisfy both the case. So if I try this, this x is 4 and y is 3, is it less than or equal to 3? So here 1 is less than or equal to 5. But, but yeah, so but this is not satisfying. In the first case, so we we actually looking for that part of solution which should satisfy both the case. So which one is correct? So only the one. So the answer for this question would be the only the first statement. Other statement is not satisfying both the equation. Uh, the other state four comma three that is a part of the solution for for the second equation, but it is not the part of solution for the first equation. Fine. So I believe uh, you know how to draw. The diagram uh, so inequality diagram so this, this is x y graph and then if i give you equation called 2 x plus y is less than or equal to 5 so what you will do to draw the 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 feasible solution uh, for for this question 2 x plus y is less than 10 so 2 x plus y is less than 10 here so this is less than 10 here so so here if i put x equal to 0 so the y value you get is 10. And if you put a y equal to 0, so the x value you get is 5. So the so with this, I can get the feasible reason. So that is 0, comma 10. So x is 0, y is 10. Okay. And then it is 5, comma 0, x is 5, y is 0. So the feasible reason. So you can plot this line. So the feasible reason for this would be this one. So all the values inside this. So this would be the feasible one. Fine. So this would be the feasible reason. While the other equation is x minus y, x minus y is less than x minus y, x minus y, that is uh, less than or equal to 5. x minus y is less than or equal to 5. So if you put x equal to 0, so the y value you will get is minus 5. And if you put x 
So if I put y equal to zero, then you'll get x value equal to five. So the feasible reason if you are searching for this, that is zero comma minus five. That is zero comma minus five, and that is five comma zero. So this would be the feasible reason for this. Okay, so the feasible reason for this, for the feasible reason, uh, when you see the feasible reason, so the feasible reason for this curve would be this. So, so what would be the solution for us? So, what would be the solution for us? So, our solution would be the area. Which is common between the these two uh, equations? What is the area which is common in these two equations? Maybe this A, this B, and this is C. This area, any any value which lies in this in this range, that is the area which is common between these two. Regions. Okay, so when we see this uh, four comma three, so when we see this uh, four comma three. So four comma three will not lie in this region. That will lie outside this region. And so, not this much explanation is not required. This is just for you uh, that if you are weak with basic knowledge of inequality, uh, you can you are most welcome to watch my videos on on inequalities to understand how to solve the problem by graphical method. Okay. So the, uh, if you study operation, it's a subject uh, you will study to solve these questions by using LPP linear programming approach. So we we'll solve it by solver method, or or in by in MS Excel we we'll, uh, we'll solve it by using solver. So so we use solver or we use simplex method. So so these things uh, if you go for MBA, you will study how to solve these kind of questions by using simplex method or by Bayesian method, all that. But for the time being, uh, when you are preparing for CA foundation exam, so if, if you know this much basic knowledge of inequality plus to understand the graphical part, that will be more than enough for you. Fine. Question number 17 is some money are triple itself in 18 years at the simple interest. What is the rate of interest? So sum of money, let my money is 100 rupees. So it get tripled means it becomes 300 rupees. Okay. So how much interest I'm earning? I'm earning. 200 rupees interest and the time is given here is 18 year okay so so you apply the simple formula p into r into p by 100 so the principal interest is 200 principal is 100 into time is 18 into r by 100 so, so what is the value of r r is 200 by 18 so what is the value of r r is 100 by 9 100 by 9 means 11.11 percent. So, uh, what time will it require for the sum to double itself at 8 percent simple interest? So, very simple. If my money is 100, so it get double means my money become 200. So, what is the interest I earn? I earn the interest of 100, and the rate rate is 8 percent per annum. Rate is eight percent per annum. So that if I apply the formula P into R into P by hundred, so hundred is equal to hundred into eight into P by hundred. So you get the value of R. What is the value of R? That is hundred by eight. Twelve point five. Hundred by eight. That is twelve point. Very simple problem. So when you see uh, when you see the simple interest, when you see simple interest, the formula for the simple interest is P into R into T by hundred. While when you see compound interest, when we talk about compound interest, the formula of compound interest is P into one plus R by hundred to the power P minus one. Okay. So remember this. Uh, whenever I talk about Whenever I talk about difference between compound interest and simple interest, whenever I talk about the difference between compound interest and simple interest, whenever I talk about 
the difference between compound interest and simple interest. So after two years, so the formula for the difference after two years is P R square by ten thousand. This is the formula for the difference between compound interest and simple interest after two years. That is P R square by ten thousand. While after three years, if I ask you, after three years, if I ask you, then the formula is is P R square. Into three hundred plus R, P R square into three hundred plus R divided by ten. Remember this. So the difference between S I and C I after two years, and this is after three years. If you remember this, uh, all the difference based questions, what you get after of S I C I after two year and three year, you can do it very easily. Uh, if you want to know more about all this, um, the explanation, the logic about how this formula came. Uh, you are most welcome to watch my videos on SI and PI. So, so here uh, when you talk about the difference, so the formula of difference is of SI and PI for two years is P R square by ten thousand. So the difference is given to you six thousand. Okay, and the principal is is six lakh. So, so you can understand. So this this I can write six lakh means six into ten to the power five. R square divided by this ten thousand means ten to the power four. This is six into ten to the power three. So if I express in this form, it it will be easy for me to cancel six and six get cancelled. Okay, then this become ten. Okay, and this become hundred. So the value of R is ten plus. Now you see what sum of money will amount to eleven thousand thirty five point five in four years at a compound interest of a four year being respectively. Okay, so they are asking you the principal and they are giving you the amount. This is the amount and this is the rate of interest. Okay, so you can do with options. Okay, so or you can do one by one. So you can use the option if you want to get the answer. So suppose you, this is your principal one plus for first year the rate of interest is four percent so one plus four by hundred into for the second year the rate of interest is three percent one plus three by hundred for so third year the rate of interest is two percent one plus two by hundred and for fourth year the rate of interest is one percent so one plus one by hundred. So the amount is eleven thousand thirty five point two zero. They are asking you find the principal. You can use calculator, and calculator will help you to get the answer. Okay, so you can write this as one zero four by hundred to one zero three by hundred is equal to one zero two by hundred into one zero one by hundred. So that is equal to one one zero three five point two. So this this is one one zero three five point two. If I count the zero two four six eight, that is ten to the power eight divided by one zero one into one zero two into one zero three into one zero four. So you can use calculator and use calculator to tell me the value for this. So you can use calculator, and you can find the value for this. One one zero three five point two. Hmm. Divide by. One zero one into one zero two into one zero three into one zero four into two four six eight. So you'll get nine 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 nine. 
कैलकुलेशन अगेन Eleven thousand thirty-five point five into divide by one zero one into one zero two into one into one zero three into one zero four. It should be ten thousand. One minute. Let me confirm. It should be ten thousand. So ten thousand. Ten thousand into one plus one person. One plus two percent into one plus three percent into one plus four percent. Eleven thousand thirty-five point five. So you can see eleven thousand thirty-five point five. So the it should be ten thousand, not thousand. So this should be ten thousand. If I take thousand, then I'll get one one zero three point five five. So one point zero one into one point zero three into one point zero three into one point zero four. That is one point one zero three five five. This into ten thousand one two three four is eleven thousand thirty five point five. Fine. So mistakes are there. Few mistakes are there. Are in the like as a. As I mentioned in the previous video, also, as I mentioned in my previous video, also, like this question, there's a mistake. So either the base is E in both the side, or either the base is ten. So mistakes are there. So mathematically, the question paper is not correct. But even then, so our objective is to help you whenever you find any difficulty. So you should be mathematically should be correct. So whenever. Like this question, find the present value of ten thousand to be required after five years. 
if the interest rate is 9% compounded annually, so the formula is future value is equal to present value into 1 plus R% percent to the power T. The same formula of amount is equal to principal 1 plus R% percent to the power T. The same formula of compound interest will apply here. Find the present value. So the 10,000 present value will be 10,000 divided by 1 plus 9% to the power 5. So this would be 10,000. And here this value is given to you 1.09 to the power. This is this is 10,000 divided by one minute. This is 10,000 This is 10,000 when this pen is not working. See this. So this is 10,000. This is 10,000 divided by 1 plus 9% to the power 5. So this is what, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000. So this is 10,000. So 10,000 divided by 1.09 to the power 5. So this value is given here in question paper, 1.09 to the power minus 5. That value is given means this is 10,000 into, this is 10,000 into 1.09 to the power minus 5. This value is given to you. So this value is given to you 0.65. This value is given to you 0.65. So this is 10,000 into 0.65. So if you do this, you will get 6500. So the answer is option B. Answer here is option D. The answer for this is option D. This is 10,000 okay. and this is option D, 6500. Okay, so question number 22, a machine was purchased for 10,000 rupees. Its rate of depreciation is 10% in the first year and then 5% in, in year. After that, find the depreciated value after seven years of purchase. So it's like simple. So 10,000 rupees is the value in beginning. So 10,000 rupees is the value in the beginning. So I hope you understand the term called depreciation. You all are preparing for CA, so definitely you know the depreciation. How we calculate depreciation either by straight line method or by single discounting method, double discounting method and all. So this is 10,000. It values depreciating by 10% every year. So, so this 10,000, so this is 10,000. Um, this is 10,000, this is 10,000, and then it decreases by 10%, so 1 minus 10%, so the value decreases by 10%. So 10% means if you should value decrease by 10% means what? What is 10% of 10,000? means it value decrease by 1,000. It becomes 9,000, okay? And then it decreases by 5% every year then it decreased by 5% every year. 
okay so 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 they are asking you the value after seven years for the first year it is uh, it is for the first year it is 10 percent then after that five percent for every year for the for the next next six years so this is nine thousand into this this value is given to you this is 0.95 this is 0.95 to the power six so this is nine thousand into 0.7351. So use calculator, find this value. 9000 into 0.7351. So 9000 into 0.7351. That is 6615.9. This is 66. This is 6615.9. So 6615.9 answer is option B. Clear everyone. So then a company is considering a proposal of purchasing a machine either by making a full payment of 4,000 rupees. So either it will make a full payment of 4,000 rupees or it will take by lease for the four year at an annual rent of 1250. So which course is, is preferable? So what is the present value of lease? So if you want to find the present value of lease, apply the formula of present value of NUT. So, so, uh, so the rent, so what is the formula of present value of lease? That is rent divided by R percent, one plus R percent to the power T minus one divided by one plus R percent to the power T. So this is the formula of present value of NUT. And we use GP to derive this formula. If you have any doubt or you want to understand more about in this formula, so uh, you can feel free to write in the comment option or you can watch my video on the installments. So in, uh, you can watch my video on installments. It, you'll find that video in the playlist. So there you'll understand about the concept. So the present value of lease, so the present value of lease, so what is the rent? Rent is 1250. Rate of interest is 14%, so 0.14. So this is this is one plus 14 percent to the power four minus one four no divided to the power four divided by one plus 14 percent to the power so one plus 14 percent to the power four is given to you so you can solve this one two five zero divided by point one four this value is given one point six eight seven zero minus one divided by one point six eight seven zero so this is one two five zero into into one two five zero into point six eight seven divided by point one four into one one point six eight seven. So you can solve this to find the present value of lease. So that is. 1250 into 0 0.687, 0 0.687 divided by 0 0.14 into That you'll get 3636. So the present value of lease is 3636. So the present value of lease is 3636. So the present value of lease is 0.36. The present value of lease is 3636. So if you if you buy the machine, if you purchase, then how much you need to pay? If I purchase, I need to pay 4,000 rupees. While if I take on lease, so the total, how much I need to pay present value, total present value, I need to pay 3636. So which is better? Leasing is preferable. So it's better that you, you take on lease so that you save the money. So instead of paying 4,000, you end up in paying only uh, 3636. So leasing is a better option.
Now see this question number 24. So here, uh, a man borrows 4,000 rupees from bank at 10% compound interest at the end of every year, 1,500 uh, as the part of repayment of the loan and interest. So how much he still owes to the bank after three such installment? So here, uh, so he borrows 4,000 rupees and the rate, the bank is charging 10% uh, per annum to this person. So, so now, uh, how much is still owed to the bank after three such payments? So, so after so, how much what would be the total value of loan, including interest? So, if I include interest, so what would be the value of loan? So, the ten percent is the rate of interest they're charging. So, four thousand on that ten percent. If I calculate for the three year, so this would be total value of loan would be four thousand into one point one to the power three. This would be 4,000 into 1.331. So this is this would be how much? Uh, I hope I'm audible and you can hear me. Uh, sorry for the inconvenience. Suddenly the internet has went away. So 4,000 into 1.331. 1, so what is the value? 4,000 into 1.331 that is 4000 into 1.331 that is 5324 that is 5324 that is 5324. So the total total value of loan including the interest that is 5324. So the total total to total to pay total to pay is 5324. And how much payment done? Payment done. How much total payment done? So how much total payment is done? So 4500 means 1500 rupees. So Three times you paid 15, 1500 rupees. So the how much you still own to them? So you still how much you still own to them? You still own to them 824 rupees. So logically for this question you have to understand logically uh, for this question according to me so the, i don't think this i according to me this is not the correct answer according to me this is not the correct answer because the options are given wrong because the 1500 rupees what uh, what you are paying every year on that uh, you will get the advantage of tax so because the 1500 rupees what i'll pay at the end of first year is not equal to the 15 rupees. What I'll pay at the end of second year is not equal to the 15 rupees, which I end at the end of third year. You, you have to understand this. So 4,000 was the loan. Okay. So after first year, after first year, how much the loan become? After first year, how much the loan become? How much your loan became? So your loan become on 4,000, 10% interest. So the loan become 4,400. So how much I paid? So I paid after how much I paid? I paid 1,500. Okay, so I paid 1,500. So after I paid 1,500, how much the loan amount became? That become 2,900. Are you getting the logic? So your loan amount become 2,900. So 9 plus 5, that is 14. Then, then 212144, two, okay. So, so, so here, so now on 2900, now on 2900, again 10% interest will be charged on that. So if you charge 10% interest on that, so 290, if you will add on this, so, so this will become 903190, then it is 2900, next year become 3190, again on that, you made 1500 rupees payment. 
So after you made 1500 rupees payment, so now the loan value will become 1690. So the loan value become 1690. Again on that, uh, again on that, 10% uh, interest will be charged on them. So, so the loan, it become 1859. On that, you paid 1500 rupees. So according to me, the answer should be 359 rupees. So this much should left after three years because because you have to understand this this calculation. This is not correct because mathematically this is not correct because fifteen hundred rupees you are paying three years. So the fifteen hundred rupees if you pay three times uh, and bear the rate of interest is ten percent. So you should get advantage of ten percent on that now. So for loan you are calculating ten percent, but the, the the money what I am giving you. 1500 rupees so on that also i should get a reward of 10 percent right so if you do it individually if you do in other way if you do other way like you say no or you will do other way so you will say 4000 rupees and 10 percent uh, for three years so you loan how much this become so this become how much five three two nine something it become five it become five three two four so five three two four then i made 1500 payment every year so what is the future value of that? What is the compounding value of that? So this 1500 rupees which I paid after one year that will grow for two years. Then that 1500 which I paid after second year that will grow for one year. And then the third was 1500. So the, the total sum is not 4500 because that 10% interest would be included in this. So this would this is this would be 1500 into 1.21 plus 1500 into 1.1 plus 1500. Okay, so plus 1500. If I take 1500 common, so I'll get 1 plus 1.1 plus 1.21. So 1500 into this. This should be 3. Point, and then 31. 3.31. So 1500 into 3.31. So 1500 into 3.31, that is 4965. This is 4965. It is not, it, it is not 4500, it is 4965. So how much paid, how much to pay, to pay total to pay that is will be, that, that will be 5324, 5324 minus 4965. So then it should be 9, then this is uh, 11, this is 5, this is 12, 12 means 9 plus 3, 359, which I got in previous way also. So 359 should be the answer. Okay, so anyway, so I told in every possible way how to get the answer. So then the effective rate of interest. So for 10 per 7 percent per annum, uh, which is converted quarterly, so the formula for the effective interest rate. So the formula for the effective interest rate, the formula for that is one plus annualized interest rate. Okay, divide by m to the power m minus one into hundred. This is the formula of effective interest rate. So, so the annualized interest rate is 7% and it is compounded quarterly. And it is compounded quarterly. So quarterly means in one year you are calculating four times. So you can find this value. This is 1 plus 7 by 4. 7 by 4 means 1 point, what is 7 by 4, 1 point how much? So 1, 30, 30 means 7 are 1.75% to the power 4 minus 1 into 100. So you can use calculator, to find the value of 1.0175 to the power 4 minus 1 into 100. You can use calculator, use calculator one by one, type one by one to find this value. You can use calculator and find this value one by one.
7.186. So the answer is 7.186%. So you can use calculator and you use calculator manually because this value is not given. Logically, they should give this value. So one by one, you can use normal calculator find the value one by one. I hope you know how to find the value one by one. So 1.0175, so into 1.0175. So one by one, we have to do it. So there's no other way. So 1.0175 into 1.0175. So you'll get 1.03. 530365 into 1.0175, you will get 1.0534 into 1.01 into 1.0175, you will get 1.071859, so minus one, so then you will get 0.071859 into 100, so you get 7.1859, so that I wrote 7.156. Okay, so future value of NUT, so the formula of future value of NUT, the formula is NUT divided by rate of interest into one plus rate of interest to the power t minus one. This is the formula of future value of NUT. NUT is thousand, rate of interest is 14%. And this is one plus 14% to the power five that is given to you. 1.925410 minus one if you do, you get 0 0.924, 0 0.92541, 0 0.925, Five four one. So you solve this. So point nine two five four one. So point nine two five four one point nine two five four one in two thousand divide by point one four. So that is six six one zero. 6610 that would be 6610.07 so what will be the population after three years when the present population is 25,000 so when the present population is 25,000 and it increase at the rate of 3% for the first year so 3% for the first year so 1.03 so it will increase at the rate of so better way. So, so you know the formula. So so twenty five thousand. Then it increase at the rate of three percent for the first year. Then for second year four percent. Then for third year five percent. So what will be the population? This will be twenty five thousand into one point zero three into one point zero four into. 1.05. Solve this that you will get the answer. Twenty-eight thousand one one nine. So then uh, SI is 0.125 of principal. So in 10% find the time simple formula. So you know the simple interest formula P into R into T by 100. SI is 0.125 P. So 0.125 P means uh, point, point 0.125 is nothing but it is one by eight. If you understand maths, you can easily understand. This is one by eight, this is P into r r is 10 into t by 100 so this is this this get cancelled hmm. so what is time time is 1.25 years
So here you can see this. So you left with one by eight. You can see that you left with one by eight is equal to t by ten. So your t will be so your t will be ten by eight. Ten by eight means five by four means one point two five. Yeah. Then next question: number of triangle that can be formed by choosing the vertices uh, from the set of twelve point seven of which lies on the same straight line. So these kind of questions is very important. Whenever we talk about triangle or triangle, we need three non-collinear point, or we need uh, we need uh, like uh, we need uh, either three non-collinear point. Or two collinear and one non-collinear. So then only we get a triangle. If we get all the point collinear, so I hope you remember uh, geometry basics on geometry. So the formula for conditions for two conditions for collinearity. So then, if you want to test the conditions for 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 collinearity, then then the area of the triangle should be zero. So if the area of triangle is zero, then then the triangle is are collinear in nature. So half into x one into y two minus y three, then x two into y three minus y one plus x three into y one minus y two. So then area of the triangle that should be equal to zero. So the area of triangle is zero, then the, the points are collinear in nature. So, uh, if you understand here, here twelve points are there, and and twelve points are there. So, from twelve points, how many triangles can you draw? Twelve C three triangles can you draw? Okay, you join three points, you get a triangle. But problem is that out of twelve points, seven points are collinear. So, because seven points are collinear, so 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 ultimately the triangle, how much you get the triangle? So the number of triangle what you will get, number of triangle that you will get that will be equal to 12 C3 minus 7 C3. What is 12 C3? That is 12 into 11 into 10 divided by 3 factorial means 6 minus 7 C3 minus 7 C3. That is 7 into 6 into 5 by 6. So 6 6 gets cancelled. This is 2. This is 220 minus 35. So you will get one eighty four. So I hope you remember NCR. NCR is n factorial by r factorial into n minus r factorial. The same thing logic I used here. So then question number thirty, you can see. Then question number thirty, you can see how many ways can the letter of the word failure? How many ways can the letter of the word failure be arranged so that the consonant always occupy the odd places? So this is three, six, seven place. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So how many consonants are there? Consonants are F, L, R. Three consonants are there, and vowels are A, I, U, A, E, I, O, U. So four vowels are there. Three consonants are there. So the consonants should always occupy the odd places. So how many odd places are there? One, two, three, four. Four odd places are there, and the consonants are three. So four. Places three consonant will come in how many ways? Four p three ways, and then you left with four places and four vowels. They can come in how many ways? Four p four ways. So four p three means twenty four. Four p four means twenty four. So that it would be five seventy six. So I believe everyone knows the formula. 
NPR, NPR formula that is N factorial by N minus R factorial. So what is 4P3? So when I say 4P3, 4P3 means 4 into 3 into 2, that is 24. So in an examination, a candidate has to pass in each of the four paper in how many ways, how many different ways a candidate can be failed. So you can understand four papers are there. Every paper the candidate can either pass or either fail. So for every paper, there are two ways are there. For every paper, there are two ways. For every paper, how many ways are there? Number of ways, it can be two ways. Either he'll get pass or he'll get fail. So for four papers, how many ways? So the number of ways, number of ways. For every paper, there are two ways are there. So four paper, how many ways are there? Total 16 ways are there, okay? So in how many different ways he can fail? So so he have to pass in all the subject. So if that, that is possible only in one way for all case. So A intersection, B intersection, C intersection, D, so means all in, he should pass in all the subject, then only he get pass, and that is possible only one way. And the remaining 15 ways are the way in which he can fail. So you can understand that. The, so so the, to pass in all to pass in all subject to pass in all four subject, so all four paper number of way that is only one way is there. That is four C one four C four. This is 4C4, this is 4C4. So what he can do in exam, so when he's writing the exam, what can what can happen? So when he's writing the exam, what can happen? That 4C0 plus 4C1 plus 4C2 plus 4C3 plus 4C4, that is equal to 2 to the power 4. So, so, so either so what can happen that either he can clear one exam or he'll clear two exam or three exam or all the four exam. So, so I want this in how many ways he'll get fail. So these are the ways in which he can fail. Means 4C0 plus 4C1 plus 4C2 plus 4C3. That is nothing but 2 to the power 4 minus 4C4. So that is 16 minus 1. That is 15. So in an, in an election, uh, the number of candidate is one more than the number of members to be elected. So if the voter can vote in 254 different ways, find the number of candidate. So in an election, the number of candidate is one more than the number of members to be elected. So number of members to be elected is suppose n. So the number of candidate is n plus one, okay? So then if, if the candidate has voted in 254 ways, so uh, so in an election, the number of candidates is so number of member to number of member to be elected, number of member to be elected is suppose n. So the so the number of candidate number of candidate is n plus one. The number of candidate is n plus one, and you have to elect only n person. Okay, so in so in so in how many ways can you vote? The so number of number of member to be elected. So the number of member to be elected. So so number of member to be elected is n. So the number of total number of member total number of members to be elected to be elected is n and the total number of and the total number of candidate and the total number of candidate is n plus one is n plus one is n plus one so what i can do uh, so so total number of candidate hmm, is n plus one. Hmm. If the total number of candidate, if I take n, 
then number of candidates to be elected would be n minus one. Okay, so if I take the total number of candidates as n, so if I take the total number of candidates as n, so the number of candidates to be elected would be n minus one. Okay, so what I can do, so so when I'm electing, so either I have to elect one person, okay, or I'll invite elect two person, or I'll elect three person. Or I'll elect four person like that maximum, and I'll elect n n n n minus one person. So this is the total number of ways. This is given to you two fifty four ways. This is given to you two fifty four ways. Okay, this is given to you two fifty four ways. So this is given to you two fifty four ways. Now uh, I hope you know that. Now I hope you know that n c zero plus n c one plus n c two plus n c three till n c n minus one plus n c n is two to the power n, and you know that n c zero plus this much is yes, you know that that is two fifty four plus n c n is is is. Is two to the power n. Hmm. So n c zero is one, and n c n is also one. So this is two to the power n. So two to the power n is two fifty six. So means n is equal to two to the power. So what is n? So n is eight. So you know that this is two to the power eight. So the value of n, what you will get is eight. Now, next question: If A, B, C are in A P and X, Y, Z are in G P, what is the value of this? So A B C are in A P. So if A B C are in A P, so if A B C are in A P, that means B is equal to B is equal to A plus C. Okay, and if X Y Z are in G P, it means it means Y square is equal to X into Z. Okay, so you have to find the value of X to the power B minus C. Into y to the power c minus a into z to the power a minus b. So, so what I can do? So, x to the power b minus c in place of uh, in place of y I can write uh, in place of y I can write x z half. In place of y I can write x z half. So then that would be equal to c minus a into z to the power a minus b. So because you know that y square is equal to x z, so y is equal to square root of x z. So I can write this as uh, x to the power b minus c into x to the power c minus a by two. Then uh, z to the power c minus a by two. Into z to the power a minus b, so I can write x to the power uh, b minus c plus c minus a by two into z to the power c minus a by two plus a minus b. So if I solve this further, x to the power two b minus two c plus c minus a by two. Into z to the power c e minus a plus two b plus so c minus a plus two a minus two b by two. So you can solve this. So x to the power. Um, so this is two b. Minus a minus c by two, and this is z to the power. Um, this is um, c minus 
c plus a minus 2b by 2. So if x, y, z are in AP, so you know that, uh, if, sorry, if a, b, c are in AP, you know that 2b equal to a plus c, you know that 2b equal to a plus c, if they are a, b, c are in AP. So here I can write, in place of 2b, I can write a plus c minus a minus c by 2. This is z, this is a plus c. In place of 2b, I can write a plus c. Ultimately, I will get x to the power 0 and z to the power 0 equal to 1. So the answer for this would be 1. Now we'll see the next question. The sum of first two terms of the infinite GP. So I hope you know the formula. Sum of infinite GP is a by one minus r, where the ratio should be less than one. So the sum of first two terms of the infinite GP is 15, means a plus a r that is given to you 15. This is for the equation. And each term is equal to the sum of all the terms following it. Okay, so each term is like that. So let the let the infinite sum of the GP, let the infinite sum of the GP. So that is S infinity that is equal to A by 1 minus R. Okay. Okay. So, so you know that. Um, so now you know that. Uh, so the infinite term means uh, first term plus second term plus third term plus fourth term that will go to the infinite term, okay? So now if I talk about a uh, second term, so here it is given each term is equal to the sum of all the term following it, okay? So it means, what this means? This means, this means, this means second term is equal to, if like if you talk about any term, so if I talk about second term, then second term is equal to, third term plus fourth term plus fifth term that will go till infinite term that is what is mentioned so the each term will be equal to the sum of all the term following it okay so so you got the logic so so what i can do uh, so if you know this so if you know this so th this is equation one and this is equation two so if you understand this part, so I can write infinite term. So the, I can write the sum of infinite term minus from the third term, fourth term, like this till infinite term. Okay, that is equal to the second term. You understand this, right? So this is, so this is the, so, so this is first term plus the second term, this sum. Hmm. So this is, what is the infinite term sum? A by one minus R. This is nothing but this is second term. 
and what is the sum of first two terms that is given to you 15 no the sum of first two terms is 15 okay so so what i can write i can write a by 1 minus r minus second term so that is equal to ar is equal to 15 so if i take lcm so a minus ar into 1 minus r is equal to 15 into 1 minus r so a minus ar plus ar square is equal to 15 minus 15 r so So here, hmm. so here what I can do, you know that a plus a r is equal to 15. So you know that if the first term is a and the second term is a r, that sum is equal to 15. So a plus a r is equal to 15, infinite term that is ar mm -hmm. so you know that a plus ar is equal to 15 so a into 1 plus r is equal to 15 so a is equal to 15 by 1 plus r so you know this relation so a is equal to 15 by 1 plus r a is equal to 15 by 1 plus r so a is equal to okay so what i can do here i can write here in place of a i can write 15 by 1 plus r in place of a i'll write 15 by 1 plus r by 1 plus r if i take here a common so 1 by 1 minus r minus r is equal to 15 so this is 15 by 1 plus r this is 1 minus r into 1 minus r is equal to 1 minus r is equal to 15 15 15 get cancelled so i can write 1 minus r plus r square divided by 1 minus r square a plus b into a minus b is equal to 1 so i can write this as 1 minus r plus r square is equal to 1 minus r square so i can write this 1 1 get cancelled so minus r plus r square is equal to r square hmm. one minute so one minute so so the sum of first two terms of infinite gp is 15 so let gp everyone understand what happens in the case of gp the ratio remain same so let the first term is a then the next term would be ar then ar square like that so the nth term will be ar to the power n minus 1 Okay, so here the sum of first two terms of infinite GP is 15. So you know that sum of infinite GP. So the sum of infinite GP that is equal to A by 1 minus R. Okay, and the, and the sum of first two terms of the infinite GP is 15. So, so let the first term is A, then the next term would be AR. 
So the sum of first two terms of the infinite GP is 15. And so A plus AR is equal to 15. Hmm. So I can write this as, so this is A into 1 plus R is equal to 15. So I can write A is equal to 15 by 1 plus R. So this is the equation 1. This is the equation 1 and each term is equal to the sum of all the term following it. And each term is equal to like if I talk about second term. So the second term will be equal to third term plus fourth term. So you understand here in case of infinite GP the ratio is less than one. So the second term is equal to the all the term following it. For, so till like that till infinite term. Okay, so this is the value. So all this term value, okay, that is equal to the second term. Okay, so I can write infinite term, sum of infinite term is first term plus second term, first term plus second term plus the infinite terms, so like plus third term, then fourth term, like that till infinite term. So the sum of infinite terms a by one minus r, okay, and and you know that uh, hmm. so here first term I can write as a, so and second term is a r, and this all are again equal to second term only. So this is again equal to second term only from third term to infinite term. So, so, so I can write this a by 1 minus r is equal to a plus a r plus a r. So then it means a by 1 minus r. So if you take a common, you will get 1 plus 2 r. So a a get cancelled. Hmm. So, So I can say that uh, 1 by 1 minus r is equal to 1 plus 2 r. So I, what I can do, I can multiply cos 1 plus 2 r into 1 minus r is equal to 1. So 1 minus r plus 2 r minus 2 r square is equal to 1. So this, this get cancelled. So r minus 2 r square is equal to 0. So r if you take common 1 minus 2 r is equal to 0. So r value is either 0 or r value is equal to 1 by 2. So the r value you will get either 0 or 1 minus 2 r is equal to 0. So 1 by 2 is equal to r. So you got the value of r. So the value of r you will get is 1 by 2. 0 cannot be the value of r. The R value is 1 by 2 and you know that uh, you know that R value is 1 by 2. So, 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 so what is the value of A? The value of A will be 15 plus R value is 1 by 2 means 1 plus 1 by 2 means 3 by 2. So the value of A would be 10. So if the value of A is 10, if A is 10 and R is 1 by 2, Okay, so what they are asking you find the sum of the series. What is the formula of sum of series? A by 1 minus R. So A is 10, 1 minus 1 by 2. Sum of series is 20. Then everyone, so question number 34, we are done. So 35, very easy. So function, you know, so fx is 2 to the power x. So if I say, so f of x plus y, so then that would be equal to 2 to the power x plus y. So 2 to the power x plus y means 2 to the power x into 2 to the power y. So, so what is, so you know that fx is equal to 
2 to the power x so fy will be equal to 2 to the power y so automatically what that means it means f of x plus y that would be equal to fx into fy option d Now you see the question number 36. So you know the set A, you know the set B, you know the set C. What is A intersection B? A intersection B means the element which is common in A and B. So what is common in A and B? So the element which is common in A and B is Q and S. That is the element which is common in A and B. So you can see P, Q, R, S. You see, then if you draw this A and B, so A and B means P, R. So you have Q, you have S, which is common in both the set. Then what? Then what is C? C is what is C? What is so the element which is common in A and B? So that that is A intersection B. Now what is C? C is M, Q, N. This is the set. From this, if you subtract Q and S, okay, so, so what, so, so C, if this is, if, if this is like this, if this is A intersection B, and if this is C, what is C minus A intersection B, means this area, what is C minus A intersection B, this area. This value, this this is this what you see. This is basically this is basically C minus A intersection B. So your C was uh, your C was M Q N and A intersection B is Q N S. So so what element? Uh, so Q will come here and A intersection B. This is S here, and what left here is M and N. The answer for this would be option A. So the set having no element that is called null set. Okay, now if you see this, this is x into root of 1 plus y plus y into root of 1 plus x is equal to 0. So if I write this x into root of 1 plus y minus y into root of 1 plus x. If I square both sides, so this is x square 1 plus y. This is y square minus y square minus y square y squared into 1 plus x. So this is x squared plus x squared y. This is y squared plus y squared. So, so this is, so if you write this as x squared minus y squared, this is x y squared minus x squared y. So this is x. This is x minus y, this is x plus y, this is x y into y minus x. So this is x minus y into x plus y, this is minus x y into x minus y. So this this get cancelled, so we left with x plus y is equal to minus x y. So we can write this x is equal to minus x is equal to y plus x y. So minus x is equal to y 
वन प्लस एक्स तो माइनस एक्स बाई वन प्लस एक्स इज इक्वल टू वाई सो यू गॉट दिस रिलेशन हेयर now if you do the differentiation of this so i hope you know differentiation of u by v so that is b du by dx minus u dv by dx divided by v square so differentiation of Minus x one plus x. This is one plus x. Keep minus outside. Then dx by dx minus x. Then d by dx of one plus x divided by one plus x whole square. This is dy by dx minus outside, so you will get one plus x minus x divided by one plus x whole square. So I can write one plus x whole square dy by dx is equal to minus one. so the answer for this question this would be minus 1 so you can see the steps here one by one all the steps you can check all the steps one by one to understand this now see question number 39 Now here, see this. So x is equal to t log t. So do the differentiation of dx by dt. So d of dt of t log t. So I hope you remember the differentiation of u and v. So differentiation of u and v u dv by dx plus v du by dx. So here this differentiation of this would be t. e of d dt of log t plus log t into dt by t so dt by dt so so here dx by dt this is equal to uh, this is equal to log t means 1 by t plus log t this is 1 plus log t. this is the differentiation of dx by dt that is 1 plus log t then uh, so then y y is equal to log t by t so differentiation of dy by dt so differentiation of u by v that is v is equal to d of dt of log t minus minus log t dt by dt so this is by t log t differentiation is 1 by t minus log t this is 1 minus log t 
So dy by dt is one one minus log t. So dy by dt is sorry u by v. No? So, so the differentiation of this one minute. So divide by t square. So the differentiation of dy by dt would be uh, one minus log t one minus log t one minus log t by t square and the differentiation of dx by dt. And the differentiation of dx by dt, dx by dt is one plus log t. That is one plus log t, one plus log t. So what is dy by dt, dx? So dy by dx is one minus log t by t into one plus log t. This is dy by dx. Now uh, here they are telling us do the differentiation of dy by dx at x equal to one. dy by dx at x equal to one. So dy by dx of x equal to one. So x equal to one means x means here. So means they are talking about p if I take if p equal to one here. So dy by dx. So here the x x is the variable. So here. I'm considering the variable as t, so this would be one minus log one divided by one into one plus log one. So dy by dx. What is log one? It doesn't matter what is the base. Log one is always zero. One minus zero divided by one plus zero. This is one divided by Answer dy by dx that is equal to one. So here you can see this. Uh, so f dash x, f dash x is equal to three x square plus two. So this is first order differentiation dy by dx that is given to you. Okay. So before I do this, uh, I hope if you know differentiation well and good. Otherwise, if you don't know the differentiation, then d by by dx of x to the power n. Is n x to the power n minus one? Okay. Similarly, differentiation d by dx of u into v, that is u into dv by dx plus v into du by dx. Okay. So previous question we have used this. Similarly, the differentiation of d of dx of u by v, that is equal to v into du by dx. Minus u into dv by dx divided by v square. Okay. Similarly, the differentiation of d of dx of log log t is equal to one by t. Okay. Differentiation of dt by dx. Fine. So, so here, if you see the the first order by product is three x square plus two. So I hope if you understand the basics, you know that differentiation of x to the power n is n x to the power n minus one. So so how will you get three x square? So you'll get three x square if if the the inside this will be x cube. So x cube will give you three x square. 
okay and then how will you get to so how will you get to how will you get to so how will you get to so you'll get to if you are doing the differentiation of of 2x otherwise constant differentiation is zero only you know that so it means what was the x it means what was your x your x was actually sorry your variable what is given here whatever suppose a that was x cube plus 2x okay this was basically your a and you can see this f into a so if you put zero here if you put zero here in place of a if you put zero here in place of so here put zero here so so this this is like you can see this is fx so the fx was basically this so here if you put zero here you will get zero so now if you put two here if you put two here so this would be two whole cube plus two into two so this would be eight plus four this would be two so so guys uh, these were the questions of mathematics so around 40 questions are given uh, by for mathematics by the by the ca icai for your preparation for this 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 season or 2020 exam so i, I hope uh, you have learned these questions how to solve this question so i have i have discussed this questions i have discussed how to solve these questions what are the best ways to get the answer very easily uh, if imagine if you want more uh, revisions on the concept of differentiation you want to solve more questions you want to solve the previous year questions of differentiation till now you want you want some kind of help uh, with the questions what is given by icai ca foundation mathematics differential calculus questions the solutions and all you can go through my videos to understand not about differentiation any topics in in the preparation if you have any doubt you can you are for, feel free to click on the playlist call ca foundation or you can go to quantitative aptitude of my ca video links and and there you will get all the required information and all the possible videos for your preparation for the basic foundation exam for the business mathematics subject in case of more doubt feel free to come up with your doubts uh, so you can come from, you can ask your doubts in the comment section and i'm always there to help you with that so so i hope you have enjoyed the session so if you have enjoyed the session then don't forget to click on the like button and if you don't like the session click on the dislike button so uh, so feel free to ask your doubts in the comment section so with that intention i like to wind up the class thank you everyone god bless you bye